Hey, it's Brendan here from WP Speed Fix. I thought I would make you this video to talk through our new-ish site speed testing tool. Um, uh, you can access this tool at appapp.wpspeedfix.com or at sitespeedbot.com. Now, we built this tool, uh, so you know, we do a lot of WordPress speed optimization work. We've optimized over 3,000 sites now at WP Speed Fix. So we do speed stuff all day long. The team does speed stuff all day long. And we we're using a lot of different tools. We we're using five or six different things to, or tools to test website speed. And it was getting frustrating and time intensive. There's some great speed test tools out there on the market, but none of them really are, encompass everything um, that is important or all the important things on the modern web. So we decided to build this tool to kind of bridge that gap. So we use this tool internally all day long and you know it's available free to use out on the web so there's a couple of features let me talk through the basic stuff so you can test from four locations right now so sydney singapore uh, london in the uk and columbus in the us so those are tested from amazon locations so you can run a test it takes 60 to 90 seconds to kind of probe the website and get results um, and this is a result for this website here. You can also get the history of tests if you use this URL. So app.wpspeedfix.com forward slash domain forward slash whatever the domain name is. The tool stores tests for 12 months. So after 12 months, it deletes the tests. Um, so you get the list of tests run, the, the time, the date and time they'll run, the load time, the size and number of requests and time to first byte. So you can click into the page and click in, you can open up the old reports like this. Um, so it's really handy if you're doing optimization work, you can actually fiddle with the, the load over time. So, so, so that's the basics of running the test. So when you run the test, it, it, it you know, brings back a lot of different metrics. So the important ones, page size. So this is how big the page was, how much stuff downloaded in megabytes. Obviously we want that to be as small as possible. The number of requests, the number of files that downloaded um, to, to, to build that page the the total load time so this page is actually quite slow it has some issues and i'll talk about that in a sec so 13 second load time for this which would be considered quite slow and then the time to first byte so time to first byte is how quickly the hosting responded how quickly it sent the first byte to the browser um, so when we scroll down here so the the tool will do a lot of interpretation it has a lot of data um, and it does some interpretation and will spit back some results at you telling you what to do and you can actually click into these and get an explanation so you can see here great your dns resolution time is in the zero to 50 millisecond range so there's nothing to do here you can actually click into that and a drop down and it'll explain in more detail about that metric so it says here ideally your dns resolution time should consistently be in 10 to 20 millisecond range if you're using a good quality dns host so we use cloudflare we use and recommend cloudflare it's pretty much the fastest dns host in the world you can see dns hosting providers um, compared at dnsperf.com um, and also just an important note especially you know just with all the metrics here so you'll see here this in under the dns section it says run this test a couple more times from multiple locations if the result stays consistent then you're all okay here so that's an important thing to just keep in mind when you're doing speed test stuff the speed is going to vary from location to location and time of day so Make sure you run a few different tests to kind of get an average because the speed will fluctuate a bit. So it'll, it will fluctuate depending on the load on the hosting environment, the time of day and how busy the internet is. So don't just do one test and you know that's it, you're done. Do multiple tests because some of these might show red initially, but if you run the test a couple of times, it might have just been a one-off that was slow or you know the speed might be okay and it was just, a, just an outlier. So keep that in mind. So there's a lot of stuff here you'll see here. Um, we basically have color coded so green yellow and red so red is generally a problem green is good and then yellow is you might want to pay some attention to it it might be okay so you can see here you know your load time is over five seconds you have a problem and that's in red so you know this is pretty obvious it, it explains in more detail what's going on here um, you know no next gen image file formats detected it explains what that's about as well now if we scroll down so here are the raw metrics so if we, you keep scrolling down, you get yes or no, and you'll get the different measurements. And again, some of these you can click into and you get an explanation. So page size sort of explains page size, how to reduce it. Um, you know, it, it explains the DNS hosting speed again. And, you know, basically all those metrics you can click into and, and get more detail on. So that's all good there. Uh, response code. So, you know, generally we want to avoid any 404s, but this, you know, everything here was was returning a 200 OK message. So 404 means there was an error. 
Um, so, you know, that's that there. So if you have a 404, you need to dig into that. Hosting provider. So we dig into this. So our team, you know, when we're, we're doing speed work and someone asks or, you know, about site speed, you know, we always look at the host that they're on. So the tool, so this part of the tool isn't 100% accurate because there are thousands of hosting providers out there. So it's not always going to return the right result. And if you're using something like Cloudflare, the tool can't see past the Cloudflare server. So you can see here, it's just returned Cloudflare as the hosting provider. So um, there are some known slow hosts. So if, uh, I think it probably says you're not on a slow host list. There we go. So there are some known slow hosts. If it is, if your site is using one of these hosts, it will show in, in the tool. And if you click into that, it explains a bit more detail, some of those hosts that, that we would consider slow. Uh, if we go down here, image compression test. Again, this isn't 100% accurate, but it's a, you know, it's a good guide. So there's 21 images on this page. They were 600K, so 0 0.6 of a meg, and potentially compressing them aggressively would reduce that by 50%. That's not always doable or possible, um, but you know, it's, it's just a rough guide for how much optimization opportunity there is for images. So in, in this particular case, there is a lot of opportunity. It's a, it's a new website. Um, it's a photography website, so obviously it's going to be very image heavy. Now, let's look at the waterfall view. So this is really important. So in any speed test, you need to dig into the waterfall view to see what's going on. It's not just good enough to look at the raw numbers. Now, if you saw at the top there, the, the load time for this page was 13 seconds, which on, on face value is a problem. Now, if we look at the waterfall view, when we look at this, we want to break the site speed down into two. So we want to look at stuff that's loading from WordPress and out of the hosting itself. Um, now, I'm talking about WordPress here because this is a WordPress site, but the same sort of concept applies to any type of site or CMS. So, uh, you know, we look at the core of the site, so anything that's loading off the hosting and out of the CMS, we pretty much have total control over that. We can change it, optimize it, move it around. So that's, you know, that's easy enough to optimize. And then we look at all the third-party stuff, loading off third-party sites and servers. So you can see the timeline across the top here in the waterfall view. So in a perfect world, we want the website loading in under one second. That's where we're pretty much guaranteed to have that snappy instant load feeling once we're, we're at that one second mark. So if I hold a mouse here and scroll down, you can see here that the site is actually loading really fast. So the stuff coming out of WordPress and the hosting, you can see here it just crossed over the one second mark. So it's loading in about, you know, if I look at that, about one and a half seconds, I think that was. Yeah, so that's the two second mark there. So one to two seconds, we have a lot of photos here. So, so that's what's blowing us out into the two second mark. So the core of this site is actually loading in around two seconds. If we scroll down further, there's a whole bunch of Facebook stuff loading here. And that's actually a, a Facebook chat widget that's blowing up the load time. And you'll see this across the web. There's all sorts of third-party stuff that really blows out the load time. So in this case, um, what we would do, we would move that live chat widget into Google Tag Manager and add a five-second delay into it loading. So that allows the website to load really quickly. And then five seconds later, once the user's been on the page for five seconds, the, the live chat is loaded through. So that's one technique to, to speed up those third-party services. There's a lot of different other ones. One is just removing them entirely. Quite often a site has lots of third-party stuff installed that was used once upon a time, like things like heat map tracking codes, but they're not being used anymore. It can simply just be removed. So you know, in this particular case, the core of the site's loading in two-ish seconds. It's really all that, that live chat stuff that's blowing it out and then taking several seconds to load on top of that. So that's really important that you look at the waterfall view when, whenever you're looking at a speed test. Don't just look at the raw numbers. If we keep scrolling down, we get a breakdown of more stuff on the site. So this can be useful. So the, the content size by content type. So you can see here, actually has a lot of JavaScript. So 1.26 meg of JavaScript, which is more than 50% of the, the file size that was downloaded. Now, in this case, that's going to be the live chat widget from Facebook's going to be a lot of that. So again, if we lazy load that in Tag Manager, we eliminate that from the initial page load. So the page is much lighter. Here you get a similar breakdown, but it's the number of requests. So 123 requests on the page, 76 of them, so 60, nearly 62% of the requests were actually that, that JavaScript. So again, that's the live chat's a problem. Um, and then we, we have the request by domain. So these are all the different host names or domains or sites that stuff is loading from. So this is a really good way to dig into that core versus third party stuff. Um, you know, those sort of optimization opportunities. So you can see in this case, 
25% of the site by by file size, more than 25%. We have Facebook.net and Facebook.com. So 31% was loading from Facebook. So you can see here, so that's 600 kilobytes plus another 150 or so. So that's quite a lot loading from Facebook. So again, the chat is a problem. And you can see here, we have the, the number of requests. So again, 30, um, 30 requests from Facebook.com four from facebook.net so that's 34 from facebook many chat so many chat is actually the chat application that's pulling through the facebook stuff so you can see there so that's a lot so from you know to optimize this site an easy way to optimize it would be to compress the images so run through a compression plugin and then lazy load that live chat so that would make the images much smaller and it would remove a lot of that javascript so it would it would load the javascript later which doesn't really interfere with the visitor's perception of speed because that, that chat widget will load in the background. Whereas when it loads with the page, it actually makes the page load feel much heavier and slower. And especially when the user's clicking through the site, every page, the, the live chat's loading with every page. So if we add a delay in there, then it's going to wait you know, for them to sit on that page for five seconds before it starts loading. So that's pretty much it. That's an overview of the tool. I hope you found this useful. Happy to um, feel any questions you have. There's probably a comment section below this video. So if you need more detail or have any questions on how the tool works, happy to hear it. Um, happy to answer any questions. Um, and if you want to send us an email, head over to the wpspeedfix.com website and send us an email through the contact form there.